development of somebody else. I want to bring up at this time because we're going to bless this baby and all of us have, have done some stuff. I got to find a name. I got a name. I'm going to get this name right. Maya, say it. Taraji Tyson. Armaya, I know you don't understand what I'm saying, but I'm going to ask if you would bring your mother and your father up with you at this time. Samara Miller. Keon Tyson. I'm going to ask Elder Tracy, Elder Auburn, if you would come and join me at this time. The responsibility that now is in the hands of these parents is the same responsibility that is yours and that is mine. But they have a very unique and and very precious responsibility to take our Maya and to raise her in the fear and in the admonition of the Lord and to teach her the Word of God. Just come and stand right, right here. We invite the family, the friends, those that are standing in support of this family and this couple and I'm going to ask Elder Tracy and, and Elder, uh, Elder Albury to, to, they've got some words that they want to share as well to the family before we present her before the Lord. see the miracle of God takes place in the lives of the dear ones that he loves so much. We know that there are millions and millions of people that have entered this place, but there is something about the birth of a child that when we see it and we experience it, we know and understand that this is not by happenstance, but that we serve a God that is an intelligent being that designed us in an intelligent way. So when I look at Amar, and I just know that God has ordained for this day to come and for her to be here so that she can share in the joys of life, the life and the love that she's going to experience from this family. We know that it is indeed a blessing, for we know that kids and our, our little children are nothing more than treasures that are given to us. But it is also an awesome responsibility that we have as well, that responsibility to place within them their little minds on their little palettes, the words of God, the way that God designs for them to live. And so it is incumbent upon the parents and the family as well to train them in the admonition of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because the greatest want of man is to find ourselves in that eternal kingdom. And the only way that she's going to get this among is by parents and such training her, not sometime off in the distance, but even now as she's still a baby. When you're holding her in your arms and you're whispering to her, letting her know that God loves her. And Dad, when you have that little girl, there's something about that relationship between a father and a daughter that goes well beyond anything you will ever experience in life. There's nothing like a father. 
father holding his little daughter. But you have a responsibility in this career. It's a very cruel and crazy world that we live in. You have a responsibility to ensure that she is always taken care of, that she's always loved. So that when she becomes of age, she will know that there's nobody like my daddy because you were there treating her. So we just pray that we had we encourage you to always be there for her, to always lift her up, and to always do this. Always let her know that God loves her. So at night when you're tucking her in bed, sing some of those old Bible songs that you learned way back in primary class. Back when you were in Pathfinders and all of those songs. And just let her know that Jesus loves you. Yes, he do. For the Bible tells you that he loves you. So parents and family, we ask that you would continue to just love her. We know what you do. And that you would just lift her up every single day and place her before the throne of God. And God is going to bless her. He's going to keep her. This is our prayer for you. It's always a blessing to watch the best of yourself in front of yourself. And you're literally holding the best of you in front of you. In the book of Genesis, chapter 21, the story is told of a young mother and her child. And it's a first time mother. She had no idea how to really care for the child. And the Bible says she placed the child under a bush. And she went away, about a bow throw away, and sat there and she cried. And she just cried. She had no more water, no more food. And the Bible says that the word of the Lord came and said, God heard the voice, not of the mother, but of the child. Nowhere in the scripture do you see where the child was crying or saying anything, but God was able to hear the voice of the child over that of the parents. Then the Bible says, I see you. There's so much in there. I don't care what the experience may be. I don't care what the chatter may be from outside. I don't care what may be going on around. God says, I see you even in that moment, even in your despair, even in your discouragement, I see you. Then the Bible says, and then he opened her eyes and showed her some water, a well of water. There's something so powerful and instructive in that scripture because God opened up her eyes and she saw a well of water, but it was upon her to go get the water and bring it back to the child. The blessings are there. That grace, that favor of God is there. And all he's saying is, I need you to just allow me to open your eyes and have strength enough to receive my blessing so your child can live and live more abundantly. And so as the two of you just raise this child as she has these bright eyes and she sees everything that's going on, she's scanning the two of you raise this child may she recognize and know that you're not relying on your own strength you're not relying on your own wisdom and 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 what what you've seen in times past or what you read in that parenting magazine but you're relying on God because the truth is none of us have it down pat none of us have it figured out but God says I see you I hear you and I have a blessing for you you have to walk in faith knowing that it belongs to you God bless you. God bless the family and friends as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to offer a word of prayer over little Armaya. And we're going to ask in this prayer for three things. Number one, we're going to pray that God would take this congregation and that he would do something with us as the family that supports the family that raises the child. Uh, we know that it takes more than just the parents. It takes everybody lifting and pulling and pushing and encouraging and, and babysitting and putting some dollars into the college fund. Oh, yeah. Uh, all of those things. It takes everybody together. And then there's this close-knit family that is here. And we're going to pray that God 
would do something special in them and for them and through them that they might be the support for these parents um, as they raise this little one. And then finally, we're going to pray that God would assign and send special angels that would attend our Maya, guide her, guard her, protect her, and that he would make her one who thirsts and hungers after his word so that one day and one day soon when he returns that our Maya, mom, dad, family, church will all be ready to meet him when they come. I'm going to ask the elders would come and join me as we pray. Most kind and gracious Father, we have come now on this sacred Sabbath day for this occasion. We have come now, Father God, asking that you would just help us to remember that it not only takes a village to raise a child, it takes Christian villages to raise a child. And so, Father, we are praying for this church, a church that understands the mission that it has been given. And that mission is to save a dying world. And so as Amari has now entered into this world, we ask that that angel that attended to her at her birth would be with her throughout her life. They don't come with manuals. So help us to understand that the church, we have the greatest manual that we can ever have. It is called the Word of God. And so we ask that you would help us to understand the commitment and the responsibility that we have as a church and that is to ensure that not only that we as individuals make it into the kingdom but that we train we nurture and we help and assist others as well to get there and so we asking that all of us as we see her from day to day from Sabbath to Sabbath that we will do whatever is necessary to ensure that she finds a resting place in your eternal kingdom as well and so we ask that whatever we do, wherever we miss, we ask that you forgive us. We ask that you would bless us with the understanding that we need to provide the guidance so that she will understand that God loves her as well. And so, Father, we are praying that you would continue to bless her, that you would continue to bless us, and that we would become a blessing to her. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Dear Father, we continue to seek your face. We're grateful, dear Lord, that you have allowed this splendid, splendid occasion where family, dear Lord, and friends can come together celebrating, dear God, the bestowing of your Holy Spirit as guidance for this child. But dear Father, we would be remiss if we stood around and celebrated this fact in our Meyer's life, but neglected, dear Lord, as family and as friends, dear Lord, to ask for that guidance in our own lives. So we're asking now, dear Lord, that you would take each family member here. Dear Lord, touch hearts and minds. Steer them, dear Lord, away from that thing which the devil seeks to destroy them with. And I pray, oh Lord, that you would guide them to your unchanging hand. Show them, dear Lord, you high and lifted up, that as they come together, dear Lord, May they not come together on their own accord as one accord, but may they come together on one accord with the Holy Spirit, understanding, dear God, the charge that is before them now. They are aunts and cousins, dear Lord, uncles, dear Father. They are friends, dear God. They are, they are family members of family members of family members, dear Lord. Our Maya will grow to know them. She will study them. She will watch them. She will, dear Father, get guidance from them. And I'm praying now, dear Lord, everything she sees, may be done to your name's honor and glory. Dear Lord, any advice that she has given, may it have been sanctioned by your throne room first. Dear Lord, I pray that any guidance, dear Lord, any, any instruction, dear Father, any household that she goes to, any interaction she has, dear Lord, may appoint her to Christ. Dear Lord, I'm asking you now to sanctify us, dear God. 
as a family stands around dear father I'm begging now for the cleansing power of your Holy Spirit so dear Lord these these garments dear Lord that the family members have on dear Lord one day we can exchange our white for pure white linen robes oh that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb may all that is done dear God by this family oh my young Armaya Taraji Tyson dear God receive that white stone with a new name understanding that she is a child of God redeemed of God taught of God and saved to spend eternal eternal life with her God abide I beg you bless the family dear Lord bless the friends and dear Lord may this experience help our mind to point someone to Christ I beg you now in Jesus name Amen. and then Lord we know that soon the skies will unfold we will look up and we will see a cloud about the size of a man's hand we'll see a retinue of holy angels dressed in white we will see Jesus the King of Kings riding on a white horse with a vesture dipped in blood and name emblazoned on his thigh King of Kings and Lord of Lords we will hear the celestial blare of resurrecting trumpets as they fill the whole earth calling from the graves. We'll hear his voice call from the north and from the south, his sons and his daughters. And Father, as he lifts up his hand to beckon them home, we will see in his hands Armaya's name written on the palm of his hands and Lord we know that because her name has already been written on your hand that she is no mistake Lord you knew that she was going to be here and you planned already for her to spend eternity with you because you said whosoever so father we would take her and Lord planting her firmly in your arms planting her firmly in your care asking today that you would hide your word in her heart so that uh, sin would not be a part of her future we ask Lord that you would order her steps in your word that iniquity might not dominate her Lord you promised that you were able to do it you said that you would contend with him that contends with us and that you would save our children and so Lord we're praying we're begging we're pleading and we're claiming that you would do what you said on behalf of this dear precious one we place her now eternally in your hands trusting in your mercy and in your power in Jesus name amen and amen Ladies and gentlemen, we want to present to you officially for the very first time, Miss Armaya Taraji Tyson.